Modern Western medical thought says that sleep paralysis occurs when the brain awakes from the REM state, but the body is still in a state of paralysis, which they say prevents the body from manifesting movements made in the subject's dreams and thus causes hallucinations, mostly of, quote, evil presences in the room. Yet they freely admit that very little is known about the physiology of sleep paralysis, and that this is at best a guess. There are several problems with this theory. One is that if it is generally accompanied by the sense that there is something evil in the room, and if it were only the result of people dreaming, even though their body is still asleep, why isn't there more people reporting all kinds of very different dreams, as you would expect, as opposed to almost identical experiences with this evil presence? The same story, the same feeling, and sometimes the same entity are being described by people who have had no contact with one another, or who have ever heard of sleep paralysis before. I think it is helpful at this point to hear what other cultures have believed about sleep paralysis for hundreds of years. In the Persian culture, it's a quote, ghost-like creature that causes sleep paralysis. In the Malaysian culture, they are reported as demonic figures. In Tamil and Sri Lanka, the translation of the term is a ghost that forces one down. In the Muslim culture, it's jinns or demons. In the Ethiopian culture, some form of evil spirit. In Zimbabwe and Shona culture, some spirit, especially an evil one. In Greece and Cyprus, it's a ghost-like creature or demon. In the southwest Nigeria region, it's a demon. In Maltese folk culture, sleep paralysis is attributed to ghosts. In Iceland folk culture, it's a goblin or succubus. In Chinese culture, it's literally translated as a ghost pressing on body. And similarly, in the Vietnamese culture, it's translated as held down by a ghost also in Hmong culture, translated as crushing demon. In Cambodian, Laotian, and Thai culture, it's attributed to ghosts. It may be tempting to dismiss these cultures' views about sleep paralysis because we think that our culture has grown out of a belief of demons. But if you have been experiencing sleep paralysis in your life, you know that the demon explanation shouldn't be thrown out quite so fast, regardless of what you think that you know about how the world works. I'm going to shoot straight with you. I know what sleep paralysis is, and I know how to stop it, and I've seen tons of people beat it for good, so bear with me as I explain all this, because I'm sure many of you will not like the truth about this, but this will be all the information that you will need to terminate sleep paralysis for good in your life. You may have guessed by now that sleep paralysis is caused by demonic presence in the room. There is some good news and bad news about this. The bad news is, is that demons are smart and deceptive and very evil. The good news is that there is a way to turn the tables on them and to make them the victims of your next encounter, as well as end it for good. If you have been researching possible causes of sleep paralysis from a Western medical perspective, you have found that everyone seems to be guessing and that no two answers are alike. I will tell you from my experience what the real causes of sleep paralysis are. I will list a few of the common causes. The most common that I have dealt with is people that have in some way been involved with, on various levels, even very light level, occult practices, such as the Ouija board, tarot cards, certain types of meditation, channeling, even obsessive research about the occult or UFOs can be the cause for some people. Generally, the deeper the person goes into the occult, the more, quote, doors that they open and the more authority the demons gain over them, which can lead to severe physical attacks and even abductions. It is important to realize that the demons gain more authority over you the deeper you go. That is why that they have an interest in a person becoming more active in the occult. Another cause is some form of generational door that has been opened for the person, usually by a parent or grandparent most often when a grandfather has been involved in high-level Masonic or other rituals. This can also happen if the parents or grandparents were involved with the occult on a pretty heavy level. This is usually the issue with people who have had sleep paralysis since they were very young. Another, more rare possibility is that there is a highly demonized object in the room. I know this sounds weird, but objects can be given demonic, quote, attachment in certain rituals. This can be crystals, books, or statues. Really just about anything can be demonized. Even if the person that is attaching the demonic presence thinks that they are only attaching, quote, energy or something else. As I have said, it is more rare, but it is still possible. There are a few other very rare possibilities, but I am already sounding crazy enough as it is, and I'm running out of time. 
So if you don't fall into any of these categories, email us at help at stopsleepparalysis.org and we will help you. Sleep paralysis is often tied to astral projection or leaving your body because they are done in the same way, that is through the help of demonic presence. Even though the people that are usually doing it are deceived into thinking that they are doing it on their own. But that is why it is so easy to leave your body during these episodes, because the source of the ability is in the room with you. You will find that many people tell others to embrace this ability when they are having sleep paralysis episodes. Please don't listen to them. This is extremely unwise and will cause more and more severe sleep paralysis episodes down the line. The short answer to how these experiences are stopped is through the authority of the real Jesus Christ. The doubts that you may have about this will vanish as soon as you see the reaction of the demons to this authority. The mechanics of this start with Jesus himself. In Luke 9 verse 1 it says, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons. And in 1 John 3 verse 8 it says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And again in Luke 10, verses 19 through 20. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus says he has given this authority to us, that is, to Christians, but calling out for Jesus' help will stop the individual sleep paralysis experience, even if the person is not a Christian, as long as the person is calling out in sincerity and not using it as a magic word. In fact, the Bible warns specifically about doing this very thing. In Acts 19, there were some people that saw that the apostles of Jesus had been given this authority over the demonic realm, and they tried to use it for themselves even though they didn't believe. It says, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. The seven sons of Shiva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them and said, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. So be careful if you're not a Christian and using the authority of Christ. Make sure that you are calling on the real Christ in sincerity for his help. Sometimes, during sleep paralysis, it is difficult to call out with your mouth or to think of the words to say, but even if you can only think of one word, let it be calling out on the name of Jesus for help. If you cannot use your mouth, ask God to give you the use of your mouth. I have even heard of a woman spelling out with her pinky finger the name of Jesus and stopped the experience. If you are not a Christian, even though you may have won the battle by calling out for Jesus' help and sincerity, they will keep coming back as they still have authority over you, because either you or someone else has given it to them. They will continue to have this until you renounce them and give your life to Jesus, who will not only set you free of this kind of bondage, but will give you a new power to love Him and to love truth, and to have total peace and joy. This is what you must do to end sleep paralysis for good in your life. Number one, recognize. You must recognize what it is. Demons. Number two, responsibility. You must take responsibility for what you recognize. Number three, repent. Repent to God for participating with what you recognize. It says in the Bible, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible also says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number four, renounce. You must make what you recognize, your enemy, and renounce it. This is especially important if there is a generational sin that is going on. Renounce anything that has been done by anyone in your family and ask Jesus to help close those doors. He is faithful to do so. Number five, remove it. Get rid of it once and for all. You must close the doors. Don't leave the doors half open. Close and lock them and throw away the key. Number six, resist. When it tries to come back, resist it. You must be bold if they come back. I have heard of someone's last experience with them being when they decided to start commanding them to go to the, quote, abyss with the authority of Christ. Show no mercy on them. They must obey the authority of Christ. Number seven, rejoice. Give Jesus thanks for setting you free. 
And number eight, restore. Help someone else to get free.